In this video, we're going to talk about the proper way to add the icons within a design system. Now, first of all, let's discuss why should we even add icons in the design system? And the answer is quite simple. You want to maintain a level of consistency with uh, all of the iconography within uh, your projects. So adding icons and uh, turning them into components, as we're going to see in just a moment, is going to allow us to do that just like we've done for the color and the typography styles in the previous videos. So if you haven't checked those out, uh, feel free to do so. So you're going to have a better understanding of uh, how we're building all of this design system from scratch. Now, the very first step is going to, of course, find the icons. Now, there's uh, two ways that you can go about it. The first one is going to be building them from scratch, so it's going to be custom icons. Now, the reason why it's not the ideal scenario in most of projects is because, first of all, it takes a lot of time to build up icons from scratch. And although you can create custom icons which tailored specifically for that brand. So it's almost like creating custom shoes compared to buying them at the store. You can uh, actually uh, invest that time in other areas. So unless uh, the client uh, requires uh, a custom icons or that specific project really, because it's always going to be your call at the end of the day in 99% of scenarios, you're probably better off by leveraging some icon set that you can find on the web. So we're going to essentially look for a icon set, which uh, you can find uh, plenty of them by simply Googling uh, the icon sets, some of the most famous ones uh, or material designs. Uh, and um, you can see a lot of different icon sets by simply going on the Figma community <clears throat> and uh, searching for icons. And what uh, you're going to want to look for is uh, scalability. Now, these are just uh, a series of uh, icon sets that uh, you can uh, consider. But uh, what I really like to do is to have uh, a premium icon set that I can work with simply because uh, there is uh, a lot of scalability and uh, also different versions of uh, the icons. So in this case, we're actually going to use uh, these uh, five uh, uh, icons which we have uh, in uh, different versions and this is actually something which is quite important uh, to um, consider meaning having uh, different type of icons which you can serve you in uh, different scenarios so for example over here we have uh, a solid icons but uh, in some instances we might want to use uh, the same icons but in outline format or even in other ones, uh, we might even want to have uh, the primary colors of the brand uh, in this uh, duotone or monotone icon. So this uh, is something that uh, you definitely want uh, to keep in mind. So finding an icon set which offers a lot of icons and also uh, different uh, versions of the same icons. Now, once you find it and uh, you want to add it in Figma, what we're going to do is we're going to simply create a new section within our design system and we are going to write in iconography and at this point we're going to delete this element except from this text which is going to be helpful and of course we're using an example with just five icons but most likely you're going to have uh, a lot of them uh, to sync. So let's get started and we're going to add labels on the top uh, so that we know which one is which, uh, especially for other team members. For example, you can add a description where you can specify when uh, the solid icons should be used, uh, when the outline icons should be used, and also the monotone or duotone icons so that uh, for example the marketing team is aware of uh, these um, differences so i'm going to duplicate this uh, just one more time i'm going to write here outline and then duotone 
I'm going to bring these ones right here. And now we're going to finally see how we can uh, add uh, these into components. Now, before even we do that, uh, I wanted to make you aware of uh, the type of structure that we're using. So you can see that uh, different icons are going to have uh, different uh, uh, width and height. So there is a level of inconsistency within uh, the, the visuals, uh, which we absolutely want to mitigate, especially if uh, we are going to add these icons in input fields or other um, components which are going to essentially need a level of consistency throughout. So what we did is uh, we added these icons within a frame, which is 20 pixels by 20 pixels. And this uh, is uh, going to be the same for each and every icon and allow for the same width and height for each and every one of these. Now you're going to see how this makes sense uh, as you're going to work on the design projects, but it's just a really nice uh, touch. So we're going to start uh, by uh, creating a component and I'm going to do this one by one. There's also ways to do it uh, in a book, but uh, for the sake of this example, I really want you to understand the logic. So we're going to take it step by step. Now let's uh, select the frame and uh, we're going to create a component out of it which uh, we successfully done, as you know from the previous video, since uh, this has been turned into purple, you can see the four dots indicating that this is the master component. And uh, you can see that we have it uh, right here. If I click on the settings, you can also add a description and uh, any link to the documentation, which uh, might be useful for the team. And uh, we are going to uh, essentially do the same for this one right here. Now you're going to notice uh, one thing, which uh, we have two components which are called male. And we've, if we go under the assets panel, you can see that uh, under <laughs> typography, because it's still, still has this uh, frame name. So we're going to change the frame name. If we go back to the assets, uh, you can see that under iconography, we have uh, two male icons. Now, this of course is not ideal because we want to differentiate between solid and outline icons. So we can easily do that uh, by simply going over here and uh, having the solid one selected. I'm going to write in solid and then slash. And as you can see, we have uh, a new entry. We're going to do that also for the outline slash and uh, we now have uh, the solid and outline versions of these icons. Now we're going to do the same also for the duotone but before we do that uh, you can see that uh, we haven't synced the colors yet uh, to the colors of the brand. So we're gonna do just that uh, since uh, we already have these uh, as uh, color styles so it's going to be very very easy. I'm simply going to select all of the uh, green ones and uh, I'm going to sync this uh, to secondary and also the stroke to secondary. Then I'm going to select uh, all of the blue ones and I'm going to basically change this to primary. Now this one hasn't uh, really... Um, okay, this I needed to select uh, the one on top because it's a combined shape. And uh, I'm going to do the same also for this one here. And uh, as you can see now, we have this synced with the color style. So if uh, for whatever reason I ever decide to make a change in brand and uh, I want this uh, to be this uh, uh, basically pink color, you can see that all the icons are going to update and sync instantly. So great uh, for scalability. I'm going to use command Z in order to go back. And at this point, I'm going to create again the component, which is going to be duotone, then slash male. All right. Now at this point, uh, 
you can see how if we go under the assets uh, we have uh, duotone we have outline we have solid and uh, this is going to enable us to filter through the different icons very easily i can also search for mail directly on top and i'm going to find uh, these uh, icons which i can easily drag and drop uh, throughout my entire file and uh, also the connected files uh, since it's going to be a library and uh, we can do the same also for these other ones now before we um, move pro uh, forward uh, we're going to want to rename these so we can uh, speed up uh, the creation of these icons uh, in bulk uh, in the right section so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use uh, command r in order to prompt the rename uh, model and uh, we're going to write in solid slash current name which essentially is going to give us the name uh, which is currently being used now at this point we select them they create component or actually i need to click on the arrow create multiple components otherwise it's going to create a single component as you just saw we can see that if we go under the assets panel and we search for solid we now have uh, all of these uh, icons uh, as solid uh, slash uh, and then the icon name so we're going to do exactly the same thing uh, also for these ones I'm going to use command r and i'm going to write outline slash current name rename and as you can see over here they're going to be outline slash shield check outline slash briefcase outline slash home and bell so we can easily go here and create multiple components and uh, we are going to be in business i'm going to use command r once again for the duotone i'm going to use slash current name rename these and once again create multiple components and if we check we have all of these icons which have been synced in just a moment so you can see how you can easily adjust all of these for pretty much infinite amount of icons on the canvas in a very short amount of time and this is going to enable you to create and add uh, various icons uh, throughout uh, your project with a very high level of consistency you can also go back and adjust uh, for example the colors from the design system on these ones we use uh, the slate tint uh, but uh, you can obviously adjust all of these uh, in a very short amount of time really so hope this video was helpful and uh, we're going to continue with uh, even more design system goodies